Hi and welcome. My name is Natasha Tello. Welcome to another edition of Mega Agent Mondays. I'm super excited. Today I have with me the incredible Sandra Rath and uh, so excited to learn a little bit more about you, Sandra, so our audience can know about what you've done and how incredibly successful you are in your business. So let's start by, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Oh, well, first, thanks for having me. This is That's exciting. exciting. Um, yes, I'm Sandra Rathy, and I've been here at Keller Williams about five years and have been in real estate for about 12. Um, before real estate, I was actually a, an auditor for Pricewaterhouse right out of college as a CPA and then went into corporate accounting. And um, after having three children, I decided to do something that was a little bit more flexible and found myself in the real estate world. Awesome. So they not a traditional trajectory into real estate like cpa to realtor right we don't right. see that as much but that's exciting so talk to us a little bit about your journey in real estate you know what does that look like let's start from the beginning you know you've been in business now 12 years right mm -hmm. your team is doing incredibly well but we didn't start there right we all started somewhere what did it look like from the beginning to where you are today talk to us about that journey um i would say the the most consistent thing about my journey has been really consistency, uh, always trying to improve and do better and do the things that we do well consistently. Um, so w from the beginning, it started off as, as me and then as very shortly adding people to the team and really trying to find like-minded people to join me and uh, you know be on this journey with me that we're a family. We're not just a bunch of agents working independently, on the same team, we're a family of like-minded people. Awesome, so tell me a little bit about the highs and lows on creating that whole business. What does that look like? Highs and lows. So I would say on the high side is, it's just such an incredible journey to watch people on the team grow and learn and you know, taking some people that have come from really nothing to being super successful and really building a great business with them I would say that is the high. Um, this year, we hit a really amazing milestone of 92 million in sales, which- Congratulations. It's 10 years ago when I've ever thought we'd be here. Uh, probably not. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And to watch these agents that come in with no background, no experience, and to be able to close over 26 million, our top agent closed this year. On the team, On the right? team, yeah. So it's it's exciting to watch them grow and, and become great business people along the way. So what do you look for? You know, that doesn't just happen, right? So what do you look for when you're looking to bring people into your world and on your team? What are you looking for in their, in their DNA makeup? Right? Sure, sure. I, and that's one of the hardest challenges, I think, in real estate for me is the hiring process and looking for those great people. Um, I think they have to be, they have to be, you know, hardworking, humble, coachable, and hungry. So we need them to be people that are gonna work hard and work smart and not be afraid to roll up their sleeves and really go that extra mile for their clients. And get it done. So where have you found your best candidates? Like the people that have joined your journey, where have they come from? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, some of them are just, it's just weird places that they find me, whether it be, my top agent, I found him. He's a relative of somebody I did a listing for. So um, through your sphere? That, yep, through sphere. Um, we have an internship program that we've had probably 20 interns come through and we have two of our active agents right now are past interns and we have two more coming on the team in the next couple of months. Um, and then a lot of agents that have, have approached me as they've seen us in the office and they wanted to join us, we've had them join that way. Um, I think word of mouth and coming from people that have recommended them is the best place because then you know, that's, a, that's a testimonial about somebody. Absolutely, I mean, and again, your sphere of influence, your database, that's you know an untapped resource that a lot of agents forget that that's where you're gonna get your talent pool. I'd love to know, I know our audience would love to know more about your intern program because I've watched you with those interns you know, over the last few years and mm -hmm. it's been really successful. If somebody wanted to start with interns, what would they, what was the first thing they should do? Sure, so first you have to figure out what is it that an intern would do for you? You know, how can they help your business? And you have to create a process for that. Um, I think it's hard because in the, in, in the real estate business we're running, we're not always in one place. So who's going to be mentoring that person, that intern or interns, 
and who's going to make them comfortable and feel loved and wanted in the in the office and if we're all out and about running around there's nobody here for that so i would say that's the challenge number one is well what are they going to do and who is going to be helping them to be successful um, when you leave them alone they get bored they get nervous and then they don't want to come back so you really do have to have a plan in place for them um, and then you figure out well what is it that they're good at and how do we tap into that so obviously we want to teach them some stuff about our business but at the same time we want to tap into their talent what are they good at so if we have an intern who is an accounting major that may not be your person doing social media for you sure um, if you've got social somebody who's on the marketing side um, getting a degree in marketing they might be great at social media so you do have to kind of tailor it to what they're good at okay so when you seek interns are you looking for them to fill specific jobs? Or are you just looking to bring people in and then you figure out where they belong? I would say the latter of the two. Okay. I have like all these buckets of things that they can do. And then, you know, the mix that we get may not accommodate every single job. Um, and we'll just do the best we can with, with the ones that we get. But we do market the internship to marketing people, accounting people, journalism, uh, you know, wide variety of people. Okay, so if somebody wanted to get started, would they reach out to their local? These are these are college students interns, right? No, not high school. Most of them. We have some? tried high school before, and we've okay. had some great experiences, but their schedule the, it's just not too flexible enough. They'd have to got come it. in. By the time they got here, the agents were all leaving, and then it just wasn't. We weren't here for them. Okay. So we've stopped doing the the high school ones. We do also take interns that are adults older than myself sometimes. Okay. Um, we prefer college students that are getting college credit, but we can't always find those ones. So sometimes we will take maybe somebody who's getting their license and they want to get experience. It could be somebody in their 50s, 60s. We'll take them if they seem like they would be a good fit for the team. Absolutely. If we can help them and they can help us, we'll take them. Okay, fantastic. If somebody wanted to get the college, is there a particular place they go for this? Is like a... So for college students, um, we advertise on Indeed, and okay. we also advertise through Handshake, which is um, the, the program that most colleges use. The portal. Okay. Very cool. Um, so let's kind of move back to, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, kind of the, where you've hit this $92 million mark this year, right? And 12 years you've done this. Mm -hmm. To what do you attribute that explosive growth? Because that's pretty incredible what you've done. Yeah, this year and last year were crazy. Um, we went last year we closed I think 55 million so we went from 55 to 92 in one year and I mean it's it's hard work hard work but I would say we also I did a lot of hiring during the pandemic which while other people were kind of sitting back being a little bit afraid of what was going on out there I actually you hit the gas I pedal did. I yeah did. I watched that we did more advertising we did more hiring um, and hiring is not always my favorite thing to do, but I have a MAPS coach who also, that was his gas pedal. Every, every call, who'd you hire? Who'd you hire? Who'd you interview? Um, so we really put a lot of effort into hiring and we ended up with some great agents that really have just taken off. Awesome. So over the years, it's just kind of hearing that a little bit. Yes, you doubled this year, but it, it, you took a couple of years to get to that point. Mm -hmm. What have been the big changes for you, like from where you started as a single agent to where you started adding some team members and an admin? I know coaching would have a lot to do with sure. it. Sure. And I think creating systems and processes for everything. So whether it be um, how do we onboard an intern? How do we onboard a new agent? Everything has a system. So when somebody steps through the door, we push a button and it starts. That doesn't mean it's all automated. But sure. Um, the process is automated. So it starts sending out emails for training, emails to um, a virtual assistant that then sends passwords. So it's everything is a system. So anything that's repeatable, anything you do more than once needs a system behind mm -hmm. it, right? Yep. Is it the same thing for your listing, the listing side, the buyer side of your business? 100% on the listing side for sure. It mm -hmm. is a very, very well-oiled machine. We do the same thing for every single listing, whether it is a $70,000 mobile home or a $2 million mansion. Uh, we do the same process for every single thing. This, we have people in place that they're gonna do repeat, repeat, repeat. And so, you know, to some of our agents and teams out there who maybe don't have the 
the, the depth of the business that you have yet, you were a single agent at one time, mm -hmm. and yet you created everything as a system. Mm -hmm. So as a single agent, there's no excuse, right? There's a system that they can implement to make this easy. There is, and it's and it makes it so much easier for yourself. Like a lot of the anxiety that people have in life is by because they don't have a system, because they don't know what's coming next, or they know they have this big bucket of things that they should be doing, but they don't know how to get it done. If you have a process and a system in place, the anxiety goes away because you know yeah. on Monday you have to do A, B, C. On the fifteenth of the month, you do D, E, and F. So you know what's coming. Absolutely. Do you let your customers know what's kind of coming, right? Yes, exactly. To alleviate their anxiety. Yeah, that's what we do, right? Um, so talk about your business. Like, Where does most of your team's business come from at this point? Um, well, we have a lot of different sources at this point, but the, the top source is going to be our farming, where we mm -hmm. are working in specific neighborhoods and you know, really understanding the neighborhood, understanding the people that are in there, developing a relationship with those people. So that's a, a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Relationship building. So it's based sure. on relationships with the people in the neighborhood. That would be number one. Our second would be from past clients, um, past clients that are coming back to either buy or sell another property. We have a client this year that we just did our seventh transaction for. Wow. And you know, we started with him sending him letters twelve years ago when I started farming and you know, we're up to seven transactions for him. So I, and I think that's like what makes us keeps us going is knowing that these past clients enjoyed working with us and they trust us over and over. That's a testament to what you guys are doing is the right thing. So, okay, so the first one was farming. Um, one of the things I know you guys do really well is you've had a newsletter and mm -hmm. you have that specific, you still have that going on? Yep, we sure do. Fantastic. You also do some community events. Um, we do. That's kind of fallen off a little bit because of the pandemic, pandemic unfortunately. Um, we've done things in the past like client events, uh, movies, we've done uh, fall festivals, I'm trying to think what else, we've done bingo night, a bunch of different things, but we haven't done anything, unfortunately, since the pandemic. And yet your business continued to grow. It did. So when I watched you do with your past customers, as I saw you guys get deeper and deeper with things for your past customers, mm -hmm. you know, I happen to uh, <laughs> share a very close proximity in my office, and so I can kind of see sometimes when you guys are always have some new thing going on in there. Talk to us a little bit about that. What does that look like for you? Like, what do you do for your customers? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure you're talking about seeing a lot of like little pink bags in our office, wrapping Baskets, paper. Baskets, wrapping paper. I see stuff all the time. Yeah, so we're always putting together just little pop-by gifts that we can drop off and say, hey, we're thinking about you. Um, you know, we might not really have much to say at this point because we know you're you're probably not moving for a couple of years, but we still want to stay in touch with you and we want you to know that we're thinking about you. So we'll all have drop offs, um, we have pumpkins, we dropped off poinsettias, um, and that kind of took over for some of the events, events. that we couldn't do. Right. So, um, you know, we keep a list of everybody. We try to make sure we're touching all of our VIPs and our, our special people a couple times a year. Awesome. Okay, so those would be your top two. What would be your third source of business? Third would be referrals um, from our sphere, past clients. Um, we get agents? Referrals. We, agent referrals? Yes, we get a lot of agent referrals too. If you put all the referrals together, all the different buckets of referrals, that probably would actually be number one, but I break it down into different subcategories, whether it be from an agent, that's one category, past clients, sphere is another category. Okay, and do you market to those as well? Do I market to agents? Past, I mean, you're already doing past clients and spare. We know that, right? Do you market to agents for referrals? I really don't. It's kind of just organic that it comes to us. Um, when people go out and they look on the web to find, you know, who's the top agent in this area, we get a lot of calls from, especially Keller Williams agents. Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they want to refer to their own. Yeah. And then we get them from other agents too, because they'll look on Zillow, who's the top agent in the area. They'll find us and, and call us. Okay. Awesome. Um, you know, obviously you've got so much going on, Sandra. What do you really attribute all the success to? I think having great people, having great people, whether they're on my team or <laughs> great leaders that we follow, um, 
you know, I really think that we've, for me anyways, it's always been about putting myself in a position with great people like yourself that will help support me and my team, um, providing great ideas, keeping us out of trouble. Uh, you know, whatever it is, it's always been, I think, having just really great people from the first day I got my license to today. Who you surround yourself really does matter, it right? It does, it does. It totally matters. So what do you, what's your vision for the future? What do you see next? What's next for Sandra? Team. Yeah, um, you know, I want to just keep growing, but not at a crazy, you know, I don't want to just add agents just to add agents. I would like to see every agent on my team hitting 10 million for their own personal goals. Um, for me, that would be a huge success to have everybody who's been in the business with my team for at least a year to be hitting 10 million. That's um, a big deal. Because I think that would really open a lot of doors for them. I have a lot of people on the team that are single moms. Um, you know, people that they don't have another support system. And I think that would be amazing to watch them get to that level. How do you provide, and I love that, how do you provide that balance for them, right? Because you did this business raising your children, mm -hmm. which by the way, they're all successful and they know they're all in college. <laughs> so, uh, but you, a, there was a time where they were still home, right? And now you've got these women on, or, or dads on the team that are raising kids. How do you help them with that? balance of business being successful and yet the family life yeah and i think that's hard because that was something that i think more and more people want that balance they want to be able to turn it off and, and have their family time um and i think with the team we really try to understand like what is important to each person and you know if i have somebody who's really into very involved in a church and they can't do things on sunday okay sunday's your day off We'll figure out how do we work around that. Um, we try to give them support in other areas so that they don't have to be on 24-7. When, like, when you're an individual agent, you're on all the time. So as a team member, we try to find ways to cover for that and we provide leads that are more specific to each person's needs. Um, trying to keep where they're going in a geographic area that makes sense for them, an area that they're comfortable in, an area that maybe they know more than another agent on the team. Um, you know, so we really just try to focus on what works for them. And then I think from, you know, I raised three kids that were within three years of each other's yes. age, right? So obviously I've been there, done that. And, and they had sports and they had extracurricular activities and they were not in a school in your backyard, right? So right. you've done this. And so, you know, I can help them with navigating that. And, you know, our conversations aren't all about real estate. It's, okay, where's your mommy network? Who's helping you get your child to school when you can't because you're sick or, um, you know, you need help with something. If we have somebody on the team that has a medical condition, you know, we're gonna help that person out. So it's, it's definitely more of a family than it is of a bunch of agents just working together. And we try to figure out what, what can we do to help make your life easier? You mentioned family. Talk to us a little bit about the DNA of your team because that is something that I notice about your team. Mm -hmm. What is that special DNA sauce that you guys have? Yeah, so I think what I've learned over the years that's most important, it's not necessarily the skill set that somebody has, it's really about culture. And you know, when you first come to Keller Williams, everybody's talking about culture and you're like, what are we talking about? And it, and I get it, it's all about culture. Because I've had agents on the team that, yeah, they could sell, they could, they had a good skill set, but were they the right culture? Were they were the right fit for the team? Were they supporting each other or was it all about them? If it's all about them, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. They might be great agents and great <clears throat> people, but it's just not a good match for the team. So over the years, I've definitely realized that it has to be a match for the team. Everybody has to like each other and support each other. It's a big deal. That whole, that whole, you know, um, having that team meshing really well is a big deal, right? Yep. If one is broken, the whole thing doesn't go. Yep, exactly. Awesome. So what are you the most proud of accomplishing? Um, I think showing my kids what I could do in a very short time. Um, you know, when they were little, I was a stay-at-home mom for a little while. I helped with charity events and things like that. And then one day I said, let's turn on this. And I thought it would just be a little hobby. Here I am 12 years later. Quite a hobby you've created. Yeah, and my kids are, especially my girls, they're so proud to see what I've been able to build and 
I, I hope that I've given them the courage and the motivation to do whatever they want to do. You know, they can be successful with whatever they embark on. You've set a great example. Um, you, as a powerful woman leader, you really are setting a great example for them and, and a lot of the women out there. So Thank that's you. all to you, girl. What do you like to do for fun? Oh, for fun. Well, I like to travel with my family. We have a, a property in North Florida, well, central North Florida, uh, where we have boats and um, I've seen kayaks. Your it's and, like a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like taking life back to you know, a quieter time. It's a very quiet area and it's family time and friends time. So I can still work from there, but right. I'm having, I'm spending time with my family and my friends and um, it's taking a little bit back to nature. We do a lot of boating and water sports. I see your son on those water skis. <laughs> He's pretty good actually. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, I know you're also playing some sports. Yes. Yeah, do people know what you do for uh, for sports? Oh, um, I don't know. I play soccer myself, and uh, my daughter plays soccer, and we love to go to NHL games. We have season tickets, so we support our Panthers. Awesome. Yeah. They've done pretty well, actually. And Surprising like for ski. a Florida team. And you guys like to ski. And we like to ski. So <clears> this year we actually bought an investment property in Colorado so that Makes we can, sense. again, take the family out there and uh, spend more family time together. And I love that investing because that's something that you guys really focus on. I know that's more of, I guess, your husband's role right now in your world. Mm -hmm. um, but investing is a big deal for you guys as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Fantastic. So if there was a theme song to your life, what would, they, what would your oh, theme song I'm be? I'm not so good with <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to come up with one of those. No, you don't have a song? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I think I can think of a bunch of songs for you, but right, we'll have that, you, you we'll, have that we'll have that conversation maybe <laughs> offline. Would that be better? <laughs> awesome. So what would one piece of advice, something you want to leave our audience with? Something what would piece of advice for them be? I would say never give up. It's and never take no for an answer. Always always keep pushing, keep pushing, not in a you salesman kind of way, but right. as a you know, when you start to feel like this is a hard business because it is a hard business. Right. Don't give up. Figure out what it is to do and be consistent. Whatever you do, be consistent about it. Don't try it once and, and give up. Try it repeatedly until you have enough data to decide if it's going to be a success or not. And just don't give up. Uh, and we started that way with consistency. You ended that way. I know that you are a master at that consistent task method, right? And I love that and never give up because we don't know what we can accomplish, right? We give up too soon yep. as human beings. Mm -hmm. So, well, listen, this was awesome getting to hang with you and getting to chat and getting, letting everybody get to know you a little bit better, Sandra. I wish you all the best. And I know this year you guys are going to kick butt. So, Thank you. Excited for what's to come. All your support. My pleasure. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, guys. Till next time.